you think of first when I say the word consent? Sex, right? What about consent education? Still sex? So when I say I want to begin teaching consent in kindergarten, most people seem pretty taken aback. Well, we aren't teaching consent in terms of respect, so kids aren't learning about it, which leads to much bigger problems later on. If we start to consider consent in sexual education as just as important as math or reading, we will begin to create a society that supports mutual respect and consent in any and all situations. Consent can be a four-year-old telling their uncle they don't want to hug right now, something they should never be scolded over. Or another child respectfully declining a kiss from a relative. Just because they are young does not mean they don't have autonomy over their own bodies. If we teach children that they are in control of themselves, they will grow up with core values of consent for others. When I'm talking about consent, I'm talking about something much more than sex. It's about respect. Respect is your parents not scrolling through your DMs when you ask them not to. Respect is your aunt not grabbing your cheeks at Thanksgiving dinner when you've asked her not to. And respect is your friends not pushing you to take an extra shot when you've asked them not to. While these are all great examples of respect, they also show us the power of consent. Consent is a mutual appreciation and unambiguous agreement between people regarding anything from drinking tea to sex. Now that I have your attention by saying sex for the past two minutes, I wanted to say that this is not a Me Too speech or a lecture on consent. While those are both important, it is not my goal here to convince you that consent is essential or to tell you that nearly two thirds of college students will experience sexual assault or that one in five women will be raped in their lifetime. I am here to talk about prevention this is about breaking down the problem so that we can understand how to begin to build a solution. Once we break down this problem, we see that we aren't teaching consent in schools and therefore kids aren't learning it, which is the base of our problem here. Less than 8% of cases of sexual assault over the past 20 years were false reports, according to the FBI. And the fact that I even have to say that is part of the problem. The fact that I have to validate the fears of the accused in order for them to see that there is a problem here is wrong. It shows that there's a large disconnect, not only between the respect of men versus women, but the respect of victims versus the accused. False accusations are not common. These statistics are terrifying, but if we aren't working from the root of the problem, there will be no long-term solution. And that root is education. If we begin to see consent and sexual education as just as important as math and reading, imagine a world where we're not only teaching our children their ABCs and their times tables, but what respect means to them and that you need consent in any and all situations. This past fall, I interned for a senator in Washington, D.C. I, along with a few other interns, were tasked to sort through mail regarding the confirmation hearings of Justice Kavanaugh. I quickly became overwhelmed by the Justice Kavanaugh hearings, the immense response to them, and the lack of empathy and knowledge that showed through the constituent calls and emails that we received. We received over 20,000 emails that we had to go through. I know that's more than 10 times the number of emails you all have unread in your inbox right now. <laughs> this work truly made me think that there are so many people who regardless of whether or not believed Dr. Ford had no idea what true consent is and how important it is. And this brings us back again to how important it is to teach consent in schools and that consent is so much more than just sex. Raise your hand if we need our, if you believe that we need our federal government to make this kind of change. Raise your hand if you think. About all of you. <laughs> so in this case, curriculum cannot be mandated on a federal level. It can only be mandated on a state level. So in order to make changes within our schools or districts, we need our state legislatures to pass laws mandating that consent education be added to existing sexual education curriculums. I knew there had to be more information regarding this. So I began researching states who have passed consent education legislation, and I found the rhetoric amongst the bills were vastly different 
There was no consistency or structure, which left room for a number of loopholes. I eventually created a short literary review of all the information I could find. And while there's not a lot, it's growing. And while some states did an incredible job, others fell short. But for now, something is better than nothing when it comes to consent education in K-12 schools. Currently, there are eight states in the District of Columbia who have mandated public schools teach consent education. The research that I'm doing is comparing this legislation, finding what works, what doesn't, and how future states can best pass consent education legislation. So to break it down for you, I've created three key parts that would truly make this legislation great. The first is utilizing the term mandate versus encourage in any and all legislation. It is essential for states to mandate consent education in order to secure funding for curriculum, maintain proper educators, and ensure that consent is being taught. If states only encourage this type of curriculum, then districts and teachers are not obligated to enter it into their curriculums. Further, once the curriculum is mandated, it provides greater access to pre-approved lesson plans on consent. These make it much easier for teachers and districts to quickly and efficiently implement consent education into their existing sexual health classrooms. The second key characteristic is appropriate age. Most state laws regarding sex or consent education cite that it should begin at an appropriate age. But what is an appropriate age? While I believe consent education should begin in kindergarten, others might think it shouldn't start until the 10th grade. States should more tightly define what they mean by appropriate age in order to avoid any further controversies or confusions. The third key characteristic I've found is the type of consent being taught. Through new legislation and updated state standards, I want policymakers to encourage that sexual education courses include instruction on healthy relationships, communication, intimacy, affirmative consent, which is consent that calls for a verbal yes, and sexual assault prevention. Consent education leads to healthier relationships, healthier lives, and a healthier society. These three key ingredients are what I want to begin pushing states to include in any and all future proposed bills regarding consent education. We saw in the fall 2018 midterm with the flip of the house that change is coming. And consent education is something that we can begin pushing for now and believing that our future and future generations will be better because of it. The ripple effect of even using one class a year to talk about the importance of consent and respect could be monumental. So what happens now? There are a few coalitions across the US lobbying local governments for consent education legislation and change. So there's a few things that I can empower you to leave this talk and do. You can do what most people suggest when they call on our local governments for change which is advocate, lobby, seek out supportive groups, call or write your representatives, pushing them to pass consent education legislation. But if advocacy isn't your thing, then just talking about consent and respect helps. Awareness is so important. Consent and sex and the difference between yes and no should not be taboo because consent is so much more than just sex. People shouldn't be worried about being accused of sexual assault if they know the difference between yes and no through a foundation of education in school. Just talking with your families, your friends, or your students can make a difference. And that's all I'm trying to do here, is start a conversation. A conversation on consent and respect through the greatest tool of all, education. And while government can often seem slow and uninspiring, change can be made and it has been made. The confirmation of Justice Kavanaugh was horrific for the survivors of sexual assault. But in Maryland, the state Justice Kavanaugh is from, consent education legislation was recently passed thanks to the work of an incredible 14-year-old girl named Maeve Sanford Kelly. This past fall in Maryland, seventh and 10th graders began learning about consent in their sexual education courses. And the fact that a 14-year-old girl could help get consent education legislation passed is more than inspiring. It's motivating. So don't leave this talk and think about how great it would be if we all understood what consent was and everyone was taught respect and consent in schools. 
I want you to leave this talk not only inspired, but motivated to make real change. Thank you.